Oh, oh we're live. Hi. Oh, we're here. <laughs> we're here. Hello. Hello, hello. It's <laughs> Tuesday. Yay, books. Got some new books. Got some fun ones. We got kids' books again this yeah. week. Very yeah. exciting. We got, we got a couple boxes between this week and last week. We did. We did. It was hard to pick, but um, I, I think I found a few really good, good ones. We had a good haul. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, so let's do... I told Maria, I was like, okay, we'll do the heavy ones first because we have a couple of adult books that she was like, oh, oh, boy. oh, oh. <laughs> and then we'll do, then we'll do the fiction. Yeah, so. <laughs> get it, get, rip them off that band-aid, just get the, get the sad ones out there. All right, so the first ones I have, this one, uh, Chatter by Ethan Cross, I talk about it all the time. I've read it, I love it, I recommend it to everybody, um, but I wanted to bring it back because it looks like we have a trifecta of <laughs> self-talk, negative talk, anxious thinking, stinking books thinking. right here, right? Stinking thinking, yeah, that's what I think. Do you, you need to get rid of your stinking thinking. <laughs> <laughs> These books are here to help you. If you can get through, there's a lot. This, one, lot. this one's yeah. not that long, um, and it reads very quickly, and it was so entertaining and just informative, and I loved it. And then there's this one called Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess. Oh, Five boy. simple, I know, scientifically <laughs> proven steps to reduce anxiety, stress, and toxic thinking. Again, just like that negative feedback loop that's featured in Chatter. But, but like, there's there's got to be a theme because what do we do but sit in our homes and don't For really go that many places <laughs> anymore and we just yeah. talk to ourselves and what happens? This, this mental some, mess some, happens. Yeah, this mental mess. Get cleaning. <laughs> And then the next one that we have is called Unwinding Anxiety. New science shows how to break the cycles of worry and fear to heal your mind. Mm. So we really just good. have, yeah, I think, you know, some of these things, they're just so interesting, the anecdotal stories that you hear. Yeah. Um, it's not all gloom and doom, but you love to hear that there are other people who are yeah. thinking rapidly, crazily, the same way that maybe you are. Yeah. It's, we're all going through this right now. Exactly, I think that's helpful. It yeah. can be reassuring to know that you're not alone. <laughs> and it's nice and it's nice to see um, yeah. the science behind it, you know, like especially in Chatter, they talk a lot about like the, the studies that they did and where this all came from. And it's not just, yeah. you know, oh, well, somebody said, and he said, or she said, it's not, you know, anecdotal. It's, there's real science behind all this. So yeah. it's very interesting. Brain so. science. A lot of brain science. Brain actually. science. We love brain yeah. science. Yeah. Okay, so we got yeah. those. And then this one, oh, no. this one's called, well, Something you never ask. You never ask them, well, what happened to you? Well, that's what this book is called. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy, Dr. Bruce what Perry, what's he, what's he doing? <laughs> Conversations on trauma, resilience, and the most important thing, healing. And, and Oprah. Oprah. Oh, Oprah's uh, here, too. I think she, like, writes a, a forward or something. Okay, so she probably, I wonder if she... Uh has known this guy yeah. met this doctor. Yeah, she, she oh. writes, I guess she's, she's part of this right here. Well, um, I'm in on it then because I love Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just all about like early childhood influences and, and how you become the person that you are, the person that you become. Um, and just like, if you experience any adversity, any trauma, like what does that do for your health long-term? How does that stick with you? And what can you do for yourself? So whether it happens when you're a child or at any age, when you're developing at any age, really, like yeah. something could happen to you that sticks with you. So I feel like that's so relevant right now too, yeah. because people are really talking about how the way people are getting through COVID and especially, you know, kids and not just kids, but you know, everybody, everybody. is yeah. resilience. Resilience is a really, um, it's a hard word to pin down, yeah. but when you have it, you know it because you you can right, bounce right. back from bad stuff, and and you want to help instill your kids some resilience yeah. as well. And it does it doesn't matter what happens to you, whether it's you know you're you're struggling right now or uh, because of COVID or if something happened to you or a family member that you witnessed that was terrible and that stuck that stuck with you or whatever whatever it is like if you there are ways to help yourself heal through it and it's going to be hard and it doesn't take it away but. You know, instead of being like, well, what happened to you? Why not, why not try to <laughs> exactly. work through what happened to exactly. you, you know? Yeah, and that resilience um, is like that word that just, like, yeah. you hear it and you go, oh, yeah, that's that's something that parents give to their kids, right. hopefully, and then the kids bring it bring it into their lives, and it, it, it can help, help you get through some really tough times, so, yeah. So, but every time I see this book, that's like, well, what happened to you? Yeah, it does seem a little bit negative, but I'm but it sure. does. But it does say in here that you know you should ask what happened to you rather than what's wrong with you, which is even worse. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so that's, I get yeah, it. I like that. I like that different framing of it. <laughs> right. Um, this one sounded really interesting. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna step away from 
realistic stuff yeah. here. Let's, let's go to something. <laughs> so this oh, is, this is, wait, yes. wait a second. This but it sounds so things. interesting. Okay. The Haunting of Alma Fielding, a true ghost story. Oh, I boy. love it. Oh, boy. Okay. Keep me up all night. I'll never sleep again. I know. And it's so funny because I always like to think, think that I'm not like a believer in those things, but I'm always frightened of stuff like this. So I maybe I, I, I must be a believer. It's like I can't. I love Halloween. I cannot yeah. watch scary movies. Everybody that I talk to is like, oh, so you watch a lot of horror movies? No. <laughs> no, I like fun movies. No, like I'll watch Hocus Pocus <laughs> yeah. over and over again, and that's my limit. Nightmare Before Christmas is as scary as it gets. <laughs> I right? watch, I mean, that one is on my TV because it's both. It's Christmas yeah. and Halloween. Exactly. So it's I watch perfect. it from like September through January. <laughs> it's, never out of, it's never out of date. <laughs> it's just in my DVD. DVD player all the time. Um, <laughs> London, 1938. One of those old timey ghosts. Uh -oh. <laughs> in the suburbs of the city, a young housewife has become the eye in a storm of chaos. In Alma Fielding's modest home, China flies off the shelves and eggs fly through the air. Stolen jewelry appears on her fingers. White mice crawl out of her handbag. Beetles okay. appear, appear from under her gloves. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. Um, in the middle of a car journey, a turtle materializes on her lap. Ah. The culprit is incorporeal. As Alma cannot call the police, she calls the papers instead. Which, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, after the sensational story <laughs> headlines the news... Uh, Nandor Fodor, a Hungarian ghost hunter for the International Institute for Psychical Research, arrives to investigate the poltergeist. But when he embarks on his scrupulous investigation, he discovers that the case is even stranger than it seems. Uh -oh. By unraveling Alma's peculiar history, Fodor finds a different and darker type of haunting, a tale of trauma, alienation, loss, and revenge. He comes to believe that her past has bled into her present, her mind into her body. There are no words for processing her experience, so it, be, so it comes to possess her. As the threat of a world war looms, and as Fodor's obsession with the case deepens, Alma becomes even more disturbed. Um, uh, a rich, the rich atmosphere of a haunting that transforms into a very modern battle between the supernatural and the subconscious. That's, that's, awesome. that's a wild ride, and it sounds yeah. so interesting, but, like... Kind of reminds me of that podcast that I love that I made you listen to with me oh. when we decorate for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great podcast. Where it you is. Like it's tells so like interesting. Kind of, like, weird, creepy, spooky stories right. that have, like, a grain of truth to it. Like, we don't, like... You right, know, like, like, it's it's kind of like, yeah. okay, well, something that's happening is out of the ordinary, but, like, what part of it is happening real in reality? Right. Because there's always a little bit that... I there's mean, there's either basis. a little bit that's that's real, or there's a lot, and but no matter what, there's still something a little it's weird. Still, so it's still creepy. Yeah. Sounds so interesting. That reminds me of that podcast. Yeah, <laughs> um, I still listen to that. <laughs> all right, Malcolm Gladwell fans oh, will be boy. happy to know that there's a new one called The Bomber Mafia. Huh. Um, a dream, a temptation, and the longest night of the Second World War. So I mean, it's it's. I think it's a little different than some of his other books, but okay. um, if you like him, you like the way he researches and the way he explains things, you'll probably like this. So what is the Bomber Mafia? An exploration of how technology and best intentions collide in the heat of war. Hmm. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell weaves together the stories of a Dutch genius and his homemade computer, a band of brothers in central Alabama, a British psychopath, and the pyromaniacal <laughs> chemist at Harvard to examine one of the greatest moral challenges in modern American history. Um, most military thinkers in the years leading up to World War II saw the airplane as an afterthought, but a small group of idealistic strategists had a different view. This bomber mafia asked, what if precision bombing could, just by taking out critical choke points, industrial or transportation hubs, cripple the enemy and make war fa make war far more or less le lethal. Um, so it's just all he talks mm. about how things could have gone, um, what is what are some of the theories about what could have happened, um, talking about the innovations, and so it's just really yeah. interesting. So it's he totally different. A different than his normal right. It's stuff. a totally different topic for him, yeah. but the same way that he really digs into the thought process behind things is how he's going to dig into this. So it's an interesting take on that is like a, a war uh, topic. Yeah. And what, is it, what does it say here? A dream? A temptation, temptation the longest world. night of the second world. Hmm. So it sounds really interesting. Yeah. So if you like him, but also maybe you like history or kind of like the whole psyche behind war and innovations, 
This might I be feel for like you. I, I, I've been seeing a lot of stuff about World War II lately, and I, you know, I feel like maybe it's because a lot of the veterans are getting much older, and yeah. um, it's just uh, one of those things that you know I've been seeing a lot on TV, and um, yeah. it's very interesting. And he's yeah. he's decided to attack this the attack this idea yeah. in this book. But also, but also as yeah. the people who were involved become older, um, I think younger people are looking to find the history that maybe mm -hmm. their families don't want to talk about. Oh, that, did I tell you about that show I've been watching? The one that's called My, My Grandparents' War, and it's oh. on PBS, and it's all about young, younger people, yeah. like actors, they're all actors and actresses, exploring um, their uh, grandparents' time in the war, and it's yeah. very, very interesting. Helena Bonham Carter. Really? Fascinating, fascinating. If you, can't, if you get to watch any, just one, it's only four episodes, but if you watch oh, one, I want to watch her that story now. is fascinating. Her grandparents helped um, people escape wow. on both sides of her family, um, and uh, were, were, were the wardens that the go mm -hmm. out in the bomb during the bombings and stuff and help. And there were of uh, uh, gentry; they were gentry. Uh, they were lady and lords, and they were out there. Hmm. Yeah, really cool. So anyway, that's, that's so what this reminded me right away. Yeah. I was like, I've been seeing so much interesting stuff about World yeah. War II that's really coming out, and uh, remind me of that. <laughs> Uh, we have Ooh. a new Danielle Steele. This is called Finding Ashley. I this know looks everybody. different for her. This I know. This what is different. this? It's um, about two estranged sisters get the chance to connect again and right the wrongs of the past. Um, hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Tells a gripping story of the strength of the human spirit to chase an impossible dream. It is the story of two strong, brave women turning wrenching loss into a reconnection and a family reunited after bringing dark secrets into the light. Oh. So it sounds really interesting. Yeah, and it definitely looks a little different than her, her other books. So. Yes. Uh, let's see, and then we have, this one is called The Music of Bees. I really liked the cover. Me too, and I'm wondering, just, it kind of reminds me of like The Secret of Bees or whatever, Secret Life of Bees or one of those uh, titles. Yeah. I wonder if it's even, has it really anything to do with bees or is it I just? Know. But I just, I love the cover. Yeah. I'm guilty. Guilty. Yeah, it is really Judge beautiful. book by the I cover. I love bees, actually, yeah. so I'm a bee fan. <laughs> uh, so this is the emotionally powerful story of three lonely strangers who meet by happenstance and find themselves together on a small local bee farm. Eileen Garvin's heartwarming debut sends all three on an inspiring journey of surprising friendship and healing and maybe even a second chance just when they least expect it. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da friendship, compassion, finding the courage to start over at any age when life hasn't turned out the way you expected. Cool. Oh, goodness. Carrying 120,000 honeybees in the back of her pickup truck. That's not even a lot. <laughs> I know. Well, I know. We well, see them like swarm. My family's always trying to get me to do a hive. Sorry, a sorry. pesticide company moves to town and threatens the local bee population. All right, that's it. Got to save the bees. Yeah, I, save I, the bees. They're so good for our planet. My poor, my dog killed a bee the other day. I was very upset. I was very, very upset. <laughs> the other I don't day, know I what... saw I saw a bumblebee in the bush right outside of my door, and I was like, oh, hello, because you know, I, I don't know if bees. you've seen online, people are like so cute to them. They're like, oh, honeybee, uh, bumblebees. They just go like bunk, bunk, because yeah. they're just all like they're just kind of doing their thing and, and bumbling around. I love that it's actually set like like the bees yeah. actually have something to do with the setting. Yeah, so that's I love cool. it. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. I might read it. Yeah. Um, and then this one sounds like a lot of fun. This is Dial A for Aunties. Ooh, aunties. I love the cover. It's like, <laughs> these are, you don't want to mess with them. Uh, what happens when you mix one, parentheses, accidental murder with 2,000 wedding guests and then toss in a possible curse on three generations of an immigrant Chinese-Indonesian family? You get... Four meddling aunties coming to the rescue. Oh I love boy. it. Oh, I see it. I see one, two, three, four, and I guess this is the young person in the middle. <laughs> um, so, so this girl, Medlin Chan, ends up accidentally killing her blind date. <laughs> yeah, sorry, right off the bat. This is, this sounds... uh, her meddlesome mother calls for for even more meddlesome aunties to help get rid of the body. Oh Unfortunately, <laughs> a dead body proves to be a lot more challenging to dispose of than one might anticipate. The leftovers. Especially <laughs> when it is inadvertently shipped in a cake cooler to an over-the-top billionaire wedding that Medi, her ma, and her aunties are working at an island resort on the California coastline. It is the biggest job yet for the family wedding business. And nothing, not even an unsavory corpse, will get in the way of her auntie's perfect buttercream flowers. 
<laughs> uh, but things oh, go boy. from inconvenient to downright torturous when Medi's great college love and biggest heartbreak makes a surprise appearance amid the wedding chaos. It is possible to escape murder charges. Is it possible to escape murder charges, charge her ex back into her life, and pull off a stunning wedding all in one weekend? Not I don't know, but it sounds very the, comical. There's the mom and the aunties, right? It just sounds like it a, doesn't a sound funny, dark. It sounds pretty, no. It sounds pretty comical. I'm actually kind of curious yeah. about it. And it sounds like fun. The reviews for it were really positive. That it's just kind of fun is and this upbeat. A new and uh, let's see. I think uh, so. Let's see. It doesn't say. It doesn't yeah. say. Yeah, because she's written other stuff, but it sounds fun. It sounds fun. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like something you would see on like a sitcom or a movie. Yeah, right, like a movie. I yeah. totally am picturing it as a movie. Yeah. Um, just one of those like hilarious, totally wacky. ridiculous. Yeah. So this is a ridiculous situation, but it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know if my aunties would cover up for me like that. I don't know. I, don't I might know. get thrown under the bus on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, aunties. <laughs> All right, are we ready to yes, look at some kids' Yes, let's see what stuff? the kids' stuff is All right. Well, this one just keeps falling over, so I have to show she it first. She wants us to look at it. The Secret Life of the Sloth. My favorite. I love sloths. We love sloths. We did this like special uh, story time a couple of years ago where we had the little stuffed animal sloths that you could stuff, but you're, it, it was, they're just so cute. I love and they them. have like, so many neat little facts about them. So we got a beautiful book that has facts and pictures about sloths, and I just had to show it to you because, look, I mean, just... just and What's sloths are kind of hot right now. The whole, they like, are. you know, stay cool, stay calm, all that. Sloths are very calm and cool. They don't really do much. <laughs> they move very slowly, and I think we should all, we should all do that. Um, let's slow see. it down. Oh, you know, I'll bring this one out next. This one's fun. The super cool science of Harry Potter. Ooh. I think I have one like this with maybe Star Wars in it. Oh, um, Which is really fun, too. And it just has some, it has some really fun, uh, you know, stuff about science but you know how much of it's real how much of it's not real uh talks about love potions do love potions really work Ooh. um let's see what's that devil's snare what are the real life flesh eating plants well it's very cool. yeah so it's kind of neat um for kids that like science and love harry potter or grown-ups <laughs> or grown-ups <clears throat> uh. <laughs> uh who was the last really great wizard Ooh. and they yeah, oh, and it has little quotes from from harry potter and stuff so for your harry potter science fan this is a fun one. Um, let's see. Do I have any more nonfiction? Nope, everything else is fiction, so I can show you. This one came in, speaking of science, and oh. it's kind of like the Ada Twist scientist, but for beginning readers. This is Cece Love Science Push oh, and cute. Pull, and she's adorable. And I think there's a couple others, too, that are coming out. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't think it's the same little girl. It's different little girls um, in the story, but all about science, and but written on a you know basic, here it says level K. So if you have a level K uh, kid that's reading, this is really nice um, because sometimes those Ada Twist Scientist ones are a little hard because yeah. they're picture books or they're chapter books. So this is sort of in between, which I thought oh, was really nice. <gasps> the cat astronauts are I back. love the cat astronauts. There's, they're my favorite. Yeah, they, they're, they're so, so adorable. Cute. Look at this. Drew Brockington has this great um, uh, comic series or graphic novel series called The Cat Astronauts. I'm going to have to read it because <laughs> I have read all of them so far. Oh, well, and so you'll, you'll know all about Darby Fuzzleton, the world's richest cat, is determined to open the first ever space hotel. Oh my goodness, this sounds like Jeff. Was, no, what's that guy's name that wants to always put everybody on Mars? Uh, Elon, Elon oh, Musk. <laughs> He's a billionaire. What's that? Cat uh, version. Her first guests, the elite cat astronauts, along with a few kittens who are top of their class at space camp. Their job to prove to the public that the space hotel is safe. So, I mean, it's not just all adorableness. There's some, you know, I guess a little bit of sci-fi in there, which is, which is fun. And I just love it. I love the way it's illustrated. If you can see, it's really cute. They're and so cute. Our they're kids so are funny. just, they're just loving the graphic novels. So yes. this is a great one. Super hot. Um, speaking of graphic novels, this one is not a graphic novel, but it's a very popular text oh, and yes. illustration. Yes, mixed. it is. The 130 Story Treehouse, newest one in the best-selling series, which I think started with the 13 Story Treehouse. So they keep adding stories yeah. to their treehouse. And um, it has that combo of of text and uh, white space yeah. and illustrations, which are really great for young-ish readers. I wouldn't. I would say this is probably like a fourth grade, maybe. Yeah, it's um, so good level. for their stamina to break it up on the page. Like if you yeah. find that your reader at home is 
saying I can't get through it, it's too slow, yeah. it's, it's too hard. Books like this that have a lot of white space or have these illustrations interspersed are so good for them. Yeah. It's really great, and the kids are reading younger and younger, so they do, they do tend to get a little overwhelmed sometimes. So it's really nice to have some illustrations to break it up. They still like them. I still like them, so. If, if, anybody, if your kids are listening or following to this, please let me know, I'll, I'll save that for them. Um, and then let's see, oh, we have this one. So now this series, The Pixie Tricks, was around when my daughter was little. Oh. And they're coming back out, they're re-illustrated and reissued, and they've done this, this whole, with a lot of extra white space. Um, it used to be much tighter and much harder to read, but they're reissuing these adorable stories about these kind of tri tricky little pixies. And my little girl loved these back, gosh, 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I, even longer probably, and um, they're back but now with the bigger space in between, a little bit more modern looking, so perfect for the for your beginning reader, I would say. It doesn't have a level on here, but it says a grade two, so I would say, yeah, like an L, M, yeah. probably. Like um, this book for older kids is by a super popular Margaret Patterson uh, Haddix. She has ton, like several series yeah. of books that are, this one is a little bit lighter, I think, than some of her, some of her others are a little dark. Um, she has that one, what was it, the one with the, the kids that were hit, the hidden children or whatever, about people who are only allowed to have two kids in their family and they, they had to hide. They can be a little dark, but they're, so, they're yeah. still accessible to like our middle grade readers, which is great because some of them can be, can want to read things that are a little more mature, but we want to watch the content yeah. or whatnot. They're not ready for like teen room content. So that's right. why her books are great for them. They're really good. They're definitely for the, yeah, like a tween, yeah. a tween type. Yeah. Um, it's a little spooky, but nothing, you know, nothing outrageously creepy. And this is, um, this is number three in this series, The Greystone Secrets. I think it's the final, the final one, the conclusion. Um, so if your kid likes this author or wants to read a fun um, and interesting series, this is the last one in that series, so. And then we have two picture books. This one, um, we love, I love this <laughs> one. It's a Caldecott Honor winner, Elijah, Elijah Cooper. This one is Yes and No with the cat and the dog in it. And I forget what the other one was called that they had, but it was so Big Cat, Little Cat. Oh, we love that one. Which was so adorable. We, that one make, makes me cry, though. I know. That one, uh, I can't That one made me cry. Big Cat, Little eyes. Cat. dry eyes, um, yeah. yeah. Oh this one God. is I'm definitely a little... I'm just thinking about... Yeah. Look, okay, I know. It's, that one got to me. <laughs> this one is, um, I think, a little less... Uh, Traumatic. Yeah, it's not as sad, but it, it's beautiful. The illustrations are yeah. so sweet and look so at, simple. Look at how cute yeah. they are. Look at the friends, you know. Have this looks like my kitty and my brother's dog. They don't like each other like this Oh, okay. At all. This they kids, it looks like they it looks like they're a little they're friends on um, their friends and they just have this cute little cozy life oh look they just hang and, out and chat all day yeah and i think it's just, oh look. it looks like somebody maybe somebody did something that wasn't so good i don't know he's got a sad face but anyway it's just really cute and um i, I love the illustrations oh Look at them. I love oh, they're that. so cute. I love that illustration. So a new one by this author and uh, with these little cat and the dog in there. And finally, this was a big one. I'm surprised. I did not know it was going to be this long. And yeah, this is a huge, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like, I mean, heavy it's, it's yeah. a lot of heavy illustrations. I love his illustrations. This author is so popular. John Klassen. Um, this one is called The Rock from the Sky. There is a spot. It is a good spot. It is the perfect spot to stand. There is no reason to ever leave, but somewhere above there is also a rock. A rock from the sky. Dun, dun, dun. I love that on the cover they're also wearing hats. It's a little homage. Yes, to, to his hat The story. hat trilogy. Yeah. yeah. His books are really popular, especially with parents, I think. Because, because you know what? They're funny. Yeah. But they're funny for kids. Like, the kids see it at service yep. level very funny. But as an adult, I... Remember, like, you can see, like, their, their funny eye expressions, and you yep. can read a little more sarcasm and strangeness into it as an adult. It's so fun to yeah. read his picture books. Yeah, they're super, they're, they're always on the bestseller list. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you would like to, to read his newest, please let me know. I have to read it. I haven't read it yet. I'm yeah. so excited. I will save it for you. And he always says, like, these hard, like, like very soft colors, not, not a lot of color or anything. Yeah. But um, you know, just just fun, fun new one, The Rock from the Sky by John Class. And let me know if you need it. Oh, and I his illustration style is very recognizable. I love it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so I think that's it today. I pulled out my favorites. It was hard. Oh. I, had to, I had to, I had to pick out. It was a good week. It was a really good week, and good I'm week. expecting more and more and more as we get closer to summer. <laughs> yeah, we already have, we already have uh, maybe like four or five adult books from next week that we're holding off to the side to share yeah. with you so we're, yeah. we're getting more and more yeah, uh and so we'll do this we'll do this again next week we'll do it again next okay. week oh Sorry. and next week um tuesday is may the 4th <gasps> 
So make sure you come with your kids to the library. We're doing a May the 4th Be With You. Uh, it's a Star Wars day at the library. Um, so check out our website and uh, learn a little bit more about that. Ooh. And uh, don't forget this Friday, we also have something for kids. Um, Pete the Cat is going to be here. Oh One my gosh. One of our gosh. favorite characters. He's gonna Major be here. celebrity sighting, Pete the Cat is going to be the cat. here. He'll be here for photo ops and some craft, you know, to take home craft and, and just to get everybody out together. Just for, to get everybody you know, dancing. Socially distanced, yeah. but together. So it should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrity sighting. Yeah, yeah. You heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. He's going to get be on the his paparazzi. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be tweeting about it. Don't tell the paparazzi. <laughs> All right. So that's it. That's lots of exciting yes. stuff always coming up. We will we'll be here. Yep. So we'll see you soon. Bye. And uh, we'll be on the video next week. Bye.